Welcome to the next module on your six month mastery. And today we're going to look at a very, very powerful coaching exercise and it's called the walk of life. And really what we're trying to do with this coaching exercise, what the aim is, is to start to make your future vision into a reality, your future vision being your goals, six month goals, 18 month goals, where you want to, where you want to see yourself in the future. Um, and if you're on this program, it's obviously focused around losing body fat and fitness, but we, I know some of you have got some other goals in other areas of your life, the four Fs, that's what we're looking at. So it's, it's to try and make whatever your goal is, the future vision, and to try and turn that into reality. And we do this by doing this very, very powerful coaching exercise. And, and a little bit around goals, and you'll know this from some of the stuff that we've been through on previous modules, you know, to achieve your goal, you must be able to pitch yourself having already achieved that goal and actually feel it and see it vividly. And having a goal is great, but you really have to make, really believe it to make it happen. You know, many people set goals. In fact, everyone sets goals. They might just not be always the most positive goals. If you think, if you ever have ever worried about something in the future, you've actually set a goal. It's a negative goal. Just because you haven't actually written it down as many it's not a goal. So you can be very, very careful what you think about because of very often the negative things that you don't want to happen will actually come true. I don't want this to happen in the future. You focus on it and it comes true. So we all set goals, whether we intentionally write them down or not. Um, but this is a great exercise to um, actually make those goals come true by actually making you feel like you've already achieved it. I said there, you must be able to actually picture yourself having already achieved that goal. And most people don't believe the goals they set. They'll set these lofty goals like, I want to lose 50 pounds. But maybe deep down, do they believe they can achieve it? Maybe not. Maybe you do. Do they believe, maybe they've tried many times before and it hasn't worked or they've had the wrong strategy or it's failed. So deep down they kind of say they want to achieve the goal but do they really believe it maybe they don't um, but you have to actually believe that it's going to become true to make it happen so it's all very well setting lofty goals i'm all for you know being ambitious and setting great goals and that's where the growth really takes place but if you say i want to lose 100 pounds in six months it's a lofty goal is it possible it's possible is it probable maybe not for most people so setting a goal of 30 pounds is something that's lofty but it's achievable at the same time you have to actually believe that you can make this goal come to fruition can you actually achieve the goal and when you don't believe it it's never going to happen and why because you give up and you don't keep fighting you don't keep working towards that goal you find a reason for it not to happen and it's almost like that self-fulfilling prophe self -fulfilling prophecy comes into play because you, you set a goal, um, you don't believe it will happen, so you never take action on it. And when you don't take action on the goal, it doesn't come true, it doesn't work, you don't achieve the goal. And a little bit of you says inside, see, yeah, I told you so. You know, Maybe I can't do that. So it's a negative self-beliefs turn into self-fulfilling prophecy you almost prove yourself correct you almost prove yourself correct by i don't believe it's going to happen so why would i work towards something that i don't i don't believe is going to happen so you give up when the going gets tough and you know any goal that's worthwhile any goal that's worth achieving in in your eyes and it's different for everyone is going to take some grit it's going to take some determination it's going to take some work so that self-fulfilling prophecy is very, very powerful. Be careful. And look, when you're trying to achieve any goal without passion, without any feeling, without a reason why, it's just not going to happen. You know, I often work with clients to say, yeah, I want to lose a few pounds before the summer. Where's the passion in that? A few pounds before the summer? Well, it's January now at the time of me recording this. So... Does two pounds by June, is that a good goal? Probably not for most people. If someone says, you know, I need to lose or I want to lose 30 pounds by the 1st of June so I can have great energy and I can play with the kids and I can go on holiday in that bikini 
or my speedos and feel good and comfortable and confident and happy with my body. That's a reason why there's some passion behind that. There's some real feeling behind that. So a whim's never going to work. Okay. And almost when the goal and desire and passion feeling is there, when you can actually physically feel this in your consciousness, in your brain, your body, it almost feels like you're being pulled rather than you've been pushing all the time. And you're going to need that because achieving all great goals is hard work. One, it needs the action plan, but it's going to need that passion, that consistency, that feeling, the dirty great reason why. And when you've got a reason why, when you've got a reason why behind what you want to do, you almost feels like it's pulling you towards the goal. The goal's inevitable. When you get there, can't guarantee, but are you going to get there 100%? non-negotiable i'm definitely going to achieve that goal so it's almost like someone's pulling you and if you're pushing at the same time as someone pulling you or something is pulling you you're going to achieve that goal the chance of you achieving it in the first place is that much higher and you're going to achieve it that much quicker than someone else that hasn't got all these things behind them so right into the walk of life this is a practical exercise you need to get outside and you're going to need a bit of space you probably need about 15, 20 yards of um, space. Do this in the field, do it in your garden, do it on the road, do it on the path, wherever you need to get outside. But it's practical exercise and you're going to just have to go with me on this. It's going to, it might feel a bit weird for some of you. So you also need your six month goals and your 18 month goals. And you can either have, have them in your head, you know what they are, uh, or you can write them down. So you've actually got something physical to refer to. So write them down on, um, on your um, pen, on your pen, on your pad. And remember, these are the goals that we set back in the first four weeks, weeks one, week two, week three, week four, to really drill down on the things you want to achieve over the next six months. And, and of course, the last exercise that we looked at in the first month was those 18 month goals. So you need them handy. And you're going to be talking to your future and past self. So you're going to be talking to yourself when you get somewhere into the future and also going back to where you are at the moment, your past self from your future self. Sounds a bit weird. Sounds a bit woo woo. Sounds a bit out there, but allow me to explain. So there's three parts to this exercise, the walk of life and part one, um, we're looking at yourself in the present. So you're outside and you're going to take five steps, walk towards the end of the program. So let's say that's from, month one to month six, or even month one to 18 months. Walk forward five steps. Imagine you're walking through one month, two months, three months. You stand at the end, five or six steps away, end of the program. Now, when you get to the end of the program, imagine you've achieved your goals. You've lost that 50 pounds. You've got that promotion. You've um, become a better husband, wife, father, mother, uh, friend. All the goals that you've set, You've built business. You've achieved the goals that you set out to do. You're going to turn around and talk back to your present self on how it feels. Now, it's going to sound a bit weird, but go with me. Go with me. Literally turn around the end of the program and imagine you're talking to yourself back on day one at the beginning of the program. Talk back to your present self on, on how it actually feels to achieve the goals, like it feels amazing. I'm so pleased that I stuck with the program. Um, I'm chuffed to bits, that I've achieved it, what it feels like, what you're doing, really get into some detail. And look, this is gonna, it might be tricky for some of you in the beginning. And the only way to do this is to actually try it. And once you start, it actually gets a lot easier. You talk back to your present self and how it feels to achieve those goals. And then you wanna thank the present you for setting off on that path. So come back into uh, the future and where you are, the end of the program, you've achieved the goals and just give yourself a pat on the back. Say, you know, thank you for um, setting off on that path because I'm very, very grateful. So it's almost like having that gratitude of starting the program, achieving the goals, going to where, getting to where you want to. Okay, that's part one. Okay, part two 
You can turn around, walk back to the beginning. Okay, so you've gone from talking to your future self back to the present. Now you're going to walk back to the beginning and you're going to talk to yourself at the end of the program. So now you've gone back to the beginning and you talk to yourself at the end of the program when you've achieved the goals. And you're going to big your future self up for the achievements that you've made. So you're going to, if you understand me, you're going to stand back on that line and talk back at yourself in six months, 18 months and say, look, well done for achieving those goals. I knew you could do it. I had confidence in you. I'm so chuffed that you started on this path. It's amazing. You've done a great job. I knew you could do it. You just have to trust the process. And I'm just making this up as I go along from some of the stuff that I did when I did this exercise. Um, and really let yourself feel it. So you're, it, all this is, is a bit like um, the vision boarding. It's a visualization exercise, future pacing. These are all different exercises to get you to think about where you've, where you've gone, where you've been, and what you've achieved. So really let yourself feel it. And then you're going to finish the end of part two. You're going to thank the future you for the confidence boost for achieving those goals. Look back to the future you and say, thank you. Um, I've achieved these goals. I really appreciate you uh, working on this, achieving this, and sticking to the end of the course, the end of the program. That's the end of part two. Okay, it takes us into part three. You're going to walk ahead past the six-month goals, the 18 to 20 months, 24 months. So year and a half to two months out into the future, which is obviously a lot longer than this program, but most of the goals that you set, you might not necessarily achieve entirely in the six month. They could be a year and a half, two month goals. You're going to talk as yourself in two years' time. Okay, so this is more future pacing. If you've achieved good goals in six months, where would you need to be in, you know, effectively four times that time? Talk to you, talk as yourself in two years' time. So say where you are now because of the work you've done in this program, because the work you do in this six months is going to be the stepping stone to get you to achieve your two-month, two-year goals. You can't achieve your two-year goals without having achieved the six months, the 12 months, the 18 months, then on to obviously the 24 months. So say where you are now because of the work you've done in this program. Talk to, you're literally going to say this out loud. I'm in such a great place. I've earned this money. I've lost 50 pounds. Um, I've got energy to play with the kids. I'm a much better person. Um, my temper's better, I've got more concentration, I'm more focused, all the different things that we're talking about and achieving within your six months on the mastery. And it, again, it's, of course, it's different to all of you. Then you're going to thank the present you and the end of program you for leading you where you are now. Okay, so I thank you for getting me to the end of the program. I'm very, very grateful. So it's more, it's like a future pacing, Visual, visualization exercise with gratitude as well. Okay, I'm hoping that makes sense to you guys. The best way to just experience this is to actually try it. Um, yeah, and so look, it might sound a bit woo woo. It might sound a bit, oh, this feels a bit odd, a bit weird. So what do, you, what do you do next? You just get outside and give it a go. It's as simple as that. That's uh, not a picture of my garden there with a the lake, there, but it would be quite nice if it was. Just get outside, give it a go. You know, all of these exercises are designed to take you out of your comfort zone. Um, and what you could do, and this is what I did after I did the exercise, sit down and journal. Um, the coffee and uh, croissant are optional. Coffee, definite. Croissant is definitely optional. You don't have to have that uh, as you journal. You may want to. So you really want to write down, you know, any thoughts and feelings, you know, how it made you feel, what do you, what you think about the exercise. There's no right or wrong answer. Just literally write whatever comes to you. Uh, observations, any learnings, what can you take away from it? Would you do it again? Anything. But also what's okay as well is to not write anything at all. You don't have to do anything. If you feel like you want to write for two minutes, Write for two minutes. If you want to write for 20 minutes, half an hour, great, do that. If you don't want to write at all, that's okay too. There's no right or wrong answer to this. This is your exercise and it's going to be different to every single one of you. So just go with it. Okay, um, once you've done all that, whether you journal or not, revisit the whole process again 48 hours later. 
Um, go back over it, have some reflection, think about, you know, would there be something you would say differently? And also not necessarily 48 hours later, you could do this um, every couple of months. You could do it every six months and revisit the whole process because things change. Maybe your thought process has changed. Maybe the actions you've taken to get you to where you are have changed. So you may even need to, to change the whole thing really. And this is, this is a fluid sort of coaching exercise. It's not stuck in stone. You don't have to actually stick to what you say. You can change this. There's, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no, there, there are no rules to this. So revisit this and, and check it out. And as always, guys, um, growth equals happiness. Getting outside your comfort zone, getting out and physically doing this um, is going to lead to growth on some level. It's going to teach you. It's going to tell you something. <laughs> You know, even if it tells you, I'm not going to do that again, that's not even that's not even a bad thing. You know, um, the only way that we can experience things is by actually experiencing them. And that sounds a bit obvious, but many people in life say, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I don't like the look of it. And that's cool. But unless you've actually experienced it, how do you know? There's so many things that I've said in my life. I don't really like, like the look of that. I don't fancy that. But I've tried it and thought, you know what? I've really gained a lot from that. So as always, with all of these exercises and philosophies and coaching ideas, they're there for you to try. And some of the greatest learnings can be taken from something you don't enjoy. I'm not going to do that again. Or, you know what, that was really difficult for me. That was really uncomfortable for me. But I've learned X, Y and Z. I've moved on. I've been improved as a person. I've got better at a certain thing. So... As always, just give these exercises a go. Get out of your comfort zone because that's where all the good stuff happens. Growth equals happiness. And happiness will in turn lead to more action and you're far more likely to achieve your goals. So get out there. Give it a go, guys. Um, give me a shout if you're struggling with anything, that aspect of this. This is um, one of the tougher coaching exercises, but it could be very, very valuable. All right, guys, thanks for tuning into the module. I'll see you on the next coaching call or the next module on your course. Adios.